So welcome to this first uh, careers interview for Arc Alexandra Academy in, in partnership with East Sussex Careers Hub. Um, these interviews are part of a new series of, uh, that are being created to help schools during this time, especially for sort of careers, um, employer engagement uh, activities. My name is Graham Morris and I'm the careers lead at Arc Alexandra. Um, today we'd like to welcome, uh, give a warm welcome to Tim Rylett from Growth by Design, who's kindly agreed to share kind of his story, but also answer some questions that we have from uh, our students concerning sort of his career uh, journey and, and sort of skills required. So can I first ask you to give the audience a short introduction to yourselves, Tim, and um, yeah, just a bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. So my name's uh, Tim Ryder. I actually uh, am the owner and uh, director in, in three separate companies. So I run a business called UK Growth Coach, which is a business coaching firm. Effectively for that one, I advise business owners on how to grow their businesses. Um, I'm a director in Growth by Design, which is a digital marketing agency. And I'm also a director in MJS Media, which is another marketing agency. Well, excellent. OK, so in, in terms of those three sort of uh, businesses, can you tell me a little bit about what what each of them entail? Yeah, sure. So for UK Growth Coach, essentially, I meet regularly with business owners, discuss through what their plans for growth of their companies are, help them address any key issues that they're facing in, the, in their companies and uh, basically act as an advisor. So I, I meet perhaps once every uh, two weeks or every four weeks, sit down for about an hour with them take a look at any particular challenge or any particular goal they've got. For Growth by Design, my role there is I'm what's called a commercial director. So my primary role is to help define what our business model is, to write uh, systems and procedures and come up with uh, commercial offerings so that we can take them out to uh, customers and help them improve their companies through their marketing. And I have exactly the same role within NJS Media as well. Right. So I guess um, kind of in terms of the first one, growth by design, I guess at the moment, do you have, how is the business going at the moment compared to this, the kind of situation globally? Is it, is it, have you found that, that um, you've had more people or more interest in, in that, in, in helping that? Yeah, I think uh, certainly at the moment, every business that is out there needs to uh, look at how it's operating and find the best ways of doing that. A lot of my work recently has involved taking a look at their business models and saying, is that still appropriate for the environment we're now operating in? Yeah. Many have, for example, gone from serving food or providing services at a physical location to now either online delivery or um, perhaps delivering through vans and things like that. So some very different ways of working, even within our own companies. Uh, currently, all of my team are working from home addresses, myself included, as you can see here. Yeah. Um, so it's the first time that we've ever worked uh, remote from one another for a number of months. And yeah, it is a bit different. Yeah, no, good. So how did you, how did you kind of get into that? You, you're obviously the, at those kind of positions at the moment, but how did you first start and get into that sort of positions? Yeah, I have a very uh, unusual background, I would say, in terms of how I got there. So I have a degree in geology. And the way I uh, progressed on from that was my housemate applied to the police force. And so um, a second application form arrived when he did that. I, at the time, didn't have a clue what I wanted to do with my life, so I filled in that application form. That led to a 10-year career um, between Sussex Police and then uh, Guernsey Police. And my role within the police force in Guernsey was as a training officer. So I was effectively teaching law and procedure. I had uh, team members I was responsible for developing, had budgets I needed to look after, and that effectively was the business skill set when I broke my knee, I then switched uh, across to owning a business coaching franchise. Uh, a franchise is effectively a, a pre-structured business um, model that you can buy into and follow their systems and grow. So that taught me how to coach businesses. And then whilst I was coaching businesses, I was enjoying working with two of my clients, particularly in the marketing sector. So I partnered into their companies as well. And that's how I got into the marketing companies. Wow, so quite a, quite a varied kind of uh, start and um, kind of from there. So in terms of what you do now, can you tell me sort of a typical day that, that kind of for you in terms of your work? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a combination of where I'm working for clients. Very often I'm taking a look at uh, how they're presenting their services to the world, working out uh, where they can improve the communication, where they can promote where they can uh, win more orders from their existing customers, 
how they can capture uh, testimonials and proof of their service. And for my own company, it's, uh, it's very much more a case of um, just taking a look at how we operate and where can we make more profit? Where can we be mm. more cost efficient? How can I get my team performing better? It's quite varied. So as an example, this morning, I've been putting together two presentations that I'm delivering this week, along with an accountancy practice and an HR company. And this afternoon, obviously, I'm presenting mm -hmm. to you. Uh, after that, I'm going to be uh, creating some new website copy for our own website. So quite varied, really. Wow, excellent. So um, in terms of that, then, the kind of the things that you do, what would you say the best things are about your job that you enjoy at the moment? Yeah, I really enjoy helping people um, create a, a breakthrough in the company. It doesn't matter whether that's in terms of business coaching or marketing, anything where you kind of got, get that aha moment where you can see that they've identified a new path they can take, a better way of doing something. And then um, the second half of that is when they've gone and applied it and they come out and say, here's how my life is better as a result of either the advice or the discussion we had or the tool that we've used. Um, yeah, that really makes my soul sing. And I, and I think that's, that's, that's quite key, I guess, for people watching in terms of um, that reason why you do things. And, and that's certainly a thing when, for us teachers that it's like you said, that aha moment of when students and when te you know, when they, when pupils get something that that's, I guess what make uh, the teachers tick. And I guess in other kind of jobs and areas, that's, that's the same thing as well. So I guess uh, the first bit of advice that you've said there about for, for students is, is, is choose something that you really enjoy and kind of that makes you tick, et cetera. Um, okay, on the, on the flip side of that is, is kind of an aspect that you're not so keen on in your job that you kind of think, because mm, I think for the audience out there, there's the, you know, with anything we do, there's always the, the, the good part of it, but there's always the, the not so good part of it. What would you say is the, the bit that you're not so keen on? Yeah, I do uh, a lot of work with spreadsheets. And whilst I'm um, okay with numbers and, and maths, it's not uh, something I greatly enjoy, but it's very important to test and measure and track and have records of how you're performing or where things can, mm. can be better. Um, but I'm a very creative person. So that kind of very linear thinking isn't really that enjoyable for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then um, kind of onto that then what, what sort of tools, I know you've got something there for us today. What, what sort of tools do you use in your, in your business and in your, in your world? Yeah, so I use um, quite a lot of different tools, but I'm just going to share my screen um, just briefly so that I, I can show you. So the first um, uh, screen that I'm showing you here is, is LinkedIn. Um, that's my own LinkedIn profile, so we don't have to worry about uh, too many people's uh, privacy on here. But very simply, um, this is an online social network for professional business people. I use the messaging facilities and the marketing tools within that to both reach new contacts, but also to hold conversations. Um, I also use it for suppliers. So this morning I was chatting with uh, somebody from a company called Lead Forensics, a really clever bit of uh, software that effectively when somebody visits your website, it will tell you who they are effectively, which company oh, wow, was okay. on your website. So it won't name names, but it will tell you which company was looking at your website. And from my perspective, that's fantastic. If someone is looking at your website, it's quite likely they're a prospect. So then how do we follow up on that is one of the, the next questions I'd be asking. Um, other things that we use, I've got obviously our own websites. So we use those uh, a lot, change content, can communicate with people. Um, but one of the more uh, advanced tools we have here is, is something called SEM Rush. And this basically is a, a very clever um, bit of kit. It allows you to assess how many people are searching the internet for particular search terms. So what I've done on the screen here, you can see I've just typed in hairdresser in Hayward Heath, the search term that a lot of people might put in. And what I'm looking for is how many people have actually used that, that search term. And in this case, you can see 880 per month. I can see how difficult it is to get a website to rank for that number. As you can see, some are, some are harder and some are easier. You can see roughly how much it would cost to get somebody to click through to a website using that search term if they're using things like Google Ads or uh, other advertising platforms. And it really is a, a very, very clever bit of kit. If I went deeper, it would say, what are all the alternates to that search term? And loads of things that 
very simply, if you're using that for your marketing, it helps with your, your websites, your blog writing, helps in all different kinds of online marketing. And it's, it's one of the uh, um, best tools that we have, really. Excellent. I guess, I guess that sort of um, links in a lot with all the different subjects at school, you know, kind of maths, IT, um, that, that kind of linked in and, sh and showed there. Um, on the other side of that as well, kind of, if you don't mind sharing some of your kind of <laughs> uh, highlights of your, your career, I guess. And kind of one thing, I guess, is, is that students sometimes um, struggle to or to sometimes will not make that step because they're fear of failure or they're fear of getting something wrong. But have you got a kind of a, a little story about an kind of embarrassing mistake that you've had during your working life? Oh, loads! <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think if you don't uh, if you don't make a mistake at, at various times, you're probably not trying. But the key thing about it is is to learn from those mistakes. So, um, what can I tell you? Once as a as a police officer, um, I was once sent out to do a warrant on a on a home address, and the intelligence department had given me the name of the building. I, I can't remember the exact name, but it was something like Wilson Hall or Wilson Court. And I hadn't realized that there were both of those on the same road. And I, uh, in my haste to go out and hit a, hit a front door, misread the name and I went to the wrong block of flats on the wrong side of the road and smashed in a perfectly innocent person's uh, front door, very embarrassingly, wow. and then had to wait for somebody to come and fix it. So yeah, I think, uh, what did I learn? Read the information carefully <laughs> and uh, understand that if you get it wrong, it's probably you that's going to have to put it right. So I had to wait for quite a long time for a board up team <laughs> on my own, much to my colleagues' uh, disgust. So okay. yeah, I think everybody makes mistakes. And I, and I think that's that, that, that kind of is, is key for students as well watching is, is read, make sure you read the instructions, you know, when they're exams and they're doing tests, etc. to ensure that they read those, those sort of questions carefully. Um, in terms of the next question, on the flip side, what, what would you say you're most proud of in your work and what you've done in your career? Yeah, I'd say there are um, two or three things that I, I would say. So one from policing, I've had various times where I've had to deal with people that were exceptionally distressed, even people at the top of uh, roading cliffs threatening to, to hurt themselves. And I've successfully... Um, had conversations with them and brought them back over the edge to, you know, yeah. hopefully get some support. Um, in the marketing world, um, I've, I've basically helped uh, clients um, build their businesses sufficiently that they were able to take their first holiday in 10 years. That, that was a really nice moment for wow. me for, for that particular business. And another one uh, bought a motor home and uh, is now able to travel the world because that's what they always wanted to do. So th those kind of things really are, are what fire me up. Excellent. Um, so then, you know, for any, again, anyone watching, they're looking at your kind of profile and saying, well, you own businesses and you're kind of probably at the top of your game. But what, what would you say is next for you? What, what's your next steps? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things I'm very conscious of at the moment is that all of the businesses that I'm involved in are fairly reliant on me to one level or another. And I think one of the key things is if you can build a business that can run without you, that's a big difference between owning your job and owning a business. And, I, and that's mm -hmm. kind of where the next five years are focused is to get the business much less, less reliant on myself and my business partners and much more um, automated. Um, I also think, you know, I'm very um, creative. I, I don't like to do the same things twice. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, making sure that I've got something that's a creative outlet for me, some, whether it's a new service or a new um, learning or something, I, I like to constantly have something fresh right. on my plate at least. So, it's, so not losing sight of that. Yeah, no, good. So for anyone sort of, anyone, anyone watching uh, here today, what, what kind of who, you know, who wants to do your role, wants to go down the same sort of role? What, what sort of three, I guess, essential skills would they need to have? What, what would you say the top, sort of top three are? Yeah, I think attention to detail would come into it. Um, I also think time management. I have a lot of different roles and a lot of different tasks that I need to get done, some of which have to be done regularly and some of which are project-based. Um, and I would also say... Um, strong written uh, and other communication skills are very important mm. for a role whether that's um, in a sales environment where you need to listen very carefully and you know phrase things very carefully 
whether it's presenting, such as where we are now thinking about what to say before you say it, um, and also to a degree being concise. One of the things I, I learned within the police force was there's only one radio, and if you're on it talking, somebody else can't be on it and talking. Mm. And sometimes that really matters. So the ability to be brief and clear, I would say as well. Yeah, okay. So um, finally, sort of some advice for my 16 year old self. What would you sort of say that for anyone out there watching who's 16 and, and sort of going through their GCSEs and, and looking for their future, what, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, I think uh, do something you enjoy would be high on the list there, there are a lot of people that go into their careers journey thinking i need to do this because it earns well i need to do that because i've been told that's a good career path for my skill set i think actually it's very important to do what you enjoy because what you enjoy you will work hard at and what you work hard at you're likely to be successful at um, for me i had absolutely no idea when i was at university um, what i wanted to do in fact the only reason i went to university was pretty much because it was expected of me not because I truly knew that I wanted to do a degree in geology. It was just a subject I, I disliked the least. Um, I think uh, once I'd done that and I started being in the police force, I suddenly realized how much I enjoyed helping people. And that theme has carried on, whether that's within the police force or through marketing or through coaching, I just like to see that what I'm doing matters to someone. Mm. And I think find out what that thing is for you. If you're a a chef and you like being created, go and do something in that field. If you're great at sports and you like working with other people towards, you know, a target, go and do that. Uh, I really think, you know, there's too many people out there doing jobs that they dislike. So go and do something fun that you enjoy and you'll build your career through that.